I'm going to go back. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. The uh, uh, Mr. Duncan, thank, I appreciate the help you're giving us in Vermont to assess what the damage has been. Uh, it, 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 do we need to make any changes to give USDA more flexibility to upgrade the resilience factors to accommodate the reality of the more extreme weather events that are occurring? Yes, uh, you know, my take on things is, is to always look to find the proactive ways to deal with things as opposed to the reactive ways. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the USDA rural development can play a role in doing that. I know EPA has a, has a, has a create, I believe they call it, for, uh, for climate resiliency um, evaluation tool. But uh, what you're looking for is those small communities don't know where to begin at all right. with any of this. So let alone the, the aging infrastructure needs that they have, they don't really have a sense of where to go. So planning assistance is, is very valuable there. That, same, that also applies for you know, how to understand where their weak points are in their system when it comes to, to any kind of extreme weather event and how to prepare for that, whether it's a large infrastructure investment or whether it's a small infrastructure investment. So providing the technical resources to allow for that to get ahead of it, in my mind, is a way that USDA rural development through their uh, water environment programs can play a role in making sure that as extreme events do occur, uh, mm -hmm. we're more buffered in being able to By the to way, does those. that also get to where the circuit riders are, be able, are able to provide that, that kind of support and help that small communities just don't have the resources for? Yes, that's correct. I mean, the circuit riders in Vermont, I know, and it, it sounds very similar for, uh, for Bob White in Alabama, and I'm sure in the rest of the rural water world, where those circuit riders are out there uh, talking about not only the day-to-day -day stuff, but all those, especially I know in Vermont, it'll be a big topic for a while right. on how can we avoid this in the future and what can we right. be doing. Let me ask, you were mentioning that. about bonding, you know, and it's a really big deal for communities to have to assess themselves when they already feel overtaxed uh, and you can't spread that out. So what are the concrete suggestions you'd make because what I understand is the apprehension people have that the bond amount is not going to cover the cost of the project, so they're reluctant to vote for something where they don't know what the bottom line is going to be. What could we do to, to uh, address that? The, the way that, at least in uh, Vermont, the way it's handled is that it's a first-come, first-served basis for USDA rural development loan and grant funding. And obviously the grant funding element is based upon median household income and, uh, and your rates where they stand. But uh, what happens is USDA Rural Development will give you an estimate of what they believe their loan and grant package will be, at which point the voters, the, the users of the system have to conduct a bond vote to try and um, pass the, uh, the, the financial will of the, of the system to cover that loan amount that comes. Uh, okay. But then you have to put the application in and hope that the package that they told that you might get will actually be there and available for you when you actually get the application in and to them. Okay, so thank you. providing certainty is key. Thank you. Ms. Coleman Flowers, you said there should be a 10-year warranty. That, that actually makes a lot of sense to me. I mean, what's been the practice uh, for folks who put money out, hoping that, and they come together to do it, it's a big decision, and they want to get that problem solved. Uh, is it the standard practice that there's no warranty for the uh, construction and, and, and uh, building of these systems? Well, we were engaged in discussions with uh, some manufacturers early on. Uh, this is actually prior to COVID, and we talked about this. And there, right now, uh, the warranties generally, you can, through some home warranty companies, the homeowner has to take the responsibility themselves. Some insurance companies would cover it. But why is the tr is it transferred from the manufacturers? I think there should be a manufacturer's warranty. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing that's going to encourage research and development and improvement. So why it's like that, I don't know. Okay. But for something that's so important, we need to change it. All right. Um, you know, uh, I listened to you, uh, Senator Tuberville. One of the things I thought I heard you say was trying to target that money to the places that need it the most in the rural areas. Maybe you could comment on that. Uh, Ms. Flowers? Yes, I, I think that in terms of rural communities, there are numerous ways in which we should look at how we get money to them. I think I've heard uh, my colleagues today talk about 
the, the challenges of getting to uh, these communities, these funds, a lot of funds are available now, but they need the technical assistance to be able to access it. And I think that we need to come up with a, with a process in which, uh, when I first got started doing this work over 20 years ago, there was a USDA office in, in, uh, that was open in, in Lowndes County where someone came at least once a week. Now that person that is no longer there and people have to travel long distances. I think we have to find a way in which to make it accessible to people in rural communities where they can get these funds. We also have to keep in mind that part of the problem too is a lot of these communities don't have broadband. Mm -hmm. If you have to register for SAMS.gov in order to even apply for the funds, that's the first hassle to get to the funds. So we have to make sure that rural communities, uh, a lot of these gaps are closed, not just the wastewater gap, but a lot of these gaps are closed in rural communities so they can get access, uh, access to technical assistance that, that you do make available. Well, thank you. Just to let you know, Senator Tuberville and I have made it a major priority about broadband in rural America for this committee to focus on, so thank you for that. Uh, Ms. Day, I want to ask you a little bit about the technical, technical assistance program, and you're, you, you've done a great job on that. How do the, uh, the TA providers help communities before and after the natural disasters? The, you know, we're having one right now, but can you just elaborate a bit on that? Uh, thank you, yes. So there's emergency response plans and uh, vulnerability assessments that are part of the USDA uh, loan requirements. And so USDA helps us, you know, to get those done in the communities so that these planning documents um, that might have been sitting on a shelf are actually, we take them down, we work through them with the community and make sure that they're up to date and accurate and are a viable document um, to work on, you know, pre and post uh, uh, disasters. And how can we be developing some more managerial capacity? Uh, Senator Hyde-Smith was asking about the training uh, and the, the, the availability of a workforce and wanting to have opportunities for young people who'd like to stay in a rural community or come there to be able to have a good job. But how do we do that? Um, so we'll take any opportunity to, uh, to work on workforce development. We've had some foundation uh, work and, and some uh, other work that we've been able to, you know, c combine together to uh, like really raise the position of these water operators in the communities. Oh, yeah. I, I've worked I, I, on so I, I, many consent know. order um, when I started in this uh, field um, for the elderly uh, manager of the system who is a volunteer who is operating the system without the correct licenses. Um, and so, you know, there's a lot that can be done around regionalization, and if um, there's some more planning dollars available to help uh, the, the small disadvantaged communities who are, are strapped anyway without accurate um, coverage for operators, um, then those larger systems could actually do uh, eligibility criteria too to get the grants from USDA because the, the smaller system is probably more eligible for grants, and then uh, that can work to bring uh, the, the lack of operators that we have, right. making sure that there are, are more of them to go around. Thank you. Uh, Senator Tuberville, and take the time you want. I went over a little bit. No problem. I don't want to 